Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and another reptile video. Now, this crop of videos, this series, they're all something and how to keep them. That's the theme. As you've noticed, if you've been paying attention, tuning in, just lately, we're looking at relatively juvenile to sub-adult snakes. As mentioned last week, that's because the adult stuff that I breed is either being covered so far or it's currently brumating. So we're looking at what isn't, what isn't hibernating, if you like, what's left. Something very, very special today. All the dry mark on, super special creatures. Anyone that keeps colubrid snakes knows what we're talking about here. Eastern indigo. King of the Hill, cream of the crop, most famous, most iconic. But I also keep yellowtail Kribos. Check out the playlist and blacktail Kribo here. This one's from Dave Howard over at Rainforest Exotics. And this is a 2021, a 2021 produced snake. And you can already see it's attained a decent size, as you'd expect from pretty much all of the dry mark on snakes. Their growth rate is rapid. And their appetite, certainly during the summer main feeding season, is ravenous. So this guy came to me as a, a an established hatchling. He's now this big, <laughs> whatever this big is. I don't know, a good four feet long now, and solid. I feed my young snakes well when they're feeding well, and then as they reach adulthood, the feeding regime is slowed down to match their growth. How to keep them? Well, I can tell you now, I keep them in small enclosures, plastic tub type enclosures to begin with until they're really settled and established. Then we'll start moving them up into either bigger tubs or vivariums now once they get to this size or a little bit smaller they're in 4b2b2s and to be honest they'll stay there until they're much more near an adult size and then they'll go in six foot enclosures you can go as big as you like but i'll tell you something that i've found out if you provide a good substrate you provide plenty of hide in places or hide boxes the dry mark on I keep. Yeah, they kind of keep themselves to themselves quite a lot. I'm looking over here because where my big pair of yellow tails are. And even those guys, they don't spend all their time in the hide box, although they do quite a bit. They stay, they stay to the back of the enclosure. I'm still really experimenting with dry mark on. So I can tell you now. My yellow tails at the moment have got uh, a hot spot around 28C and the rest of their enclosure ranges from 20, 22 up to that 28C hot spot. They spend most of their time at the cooler end. However, when you look at some of the online photos of, let's say Yellowtail Cremos, with exact localities stamped on the photos and then you research those exact localities online and look at the actual daytime temperatures and the nighttime temperatures, they're tropical, 32 degrees all day long. I, I don't know. I'm finding the yellow towels do like a little bit of heat and they, they do seem more active without being stressed and, and trying to get out away from the heat. This guy, he's an ambient, ambient room temperature here. He's around 24 to 26 C in the day across his vivarium, but it's ambient, it is lit with fluorescent lighting. And that's in the winter time here in the UK. And in the summertime, that's gonna get between 25 and 30, depending on how hot the weather is, but never 30 all the way across. He's always got that sort of 25, 26 degree escape, even in the hot weather. This guy, at these cooler winter temperatures, is ravenous, digests food well, and is a pretty puffing and puffing but a pretty damn good looking creature indeed 
if you want to upgrade your vivariums without upgrading them necessarily there's two little tricks you can really increase floor space for snakes like these that don't bother climbing that much you can divide that vivarium horizontally or put a hole in a corner and you've just doubled the floor space put heights in both areas put water in the core but maybe a heat source in one of the levels and the snake will actively move through there so now you've doubled its floor space my yellow tails have got a hold on a shelf ledge under full spectrum lighting very rarely do they use it and at the moment those guys are working on their enclosure being dark or well not dark but no extra lighting in there only the heat lamp just this ambient room lighting they seem a lot happier for it maybe it's their rainforest sort of devolution if you like all of my drone archon stay hidden a lot of the time now they are well fed even the big adults not just when they're small if you actually want to keep something like a dry mark on snake an indigo or a kribo and you want a pet that's very handleable but is also always on show always active in the enclosure but a very similar species to work with and in its attitude do you know what I'd forget the high price tag of dry mark on and I'd get yourself a false water cobra. They don't quite have the kudos because they're now quite cheap. They're not indigos. False water cobra, much of the same attitude, intelligence if you will, way more active and interesting, I think, than most dry mark on, but I'm not putting these guys down. And if you are keeping dry mark on, an adult yellowtail crebo, wow mind-blowing an eastern indigo it's the icon but as a pet a snake that won't be running off your hands with all mold around your hands with the looks of a non-venomous king cobra the black tail crebo it might not have the color it's got some pretty good looks black tail crebos absolutely amazing animal to work with make sure you don't overheat them 28 hotspot I think is pretty good but make sure they can get down to that sort of 22 degrees centigrade hiding places I use coir substrate with all my big colubrids because it's absorbent and they're messy and smelly if you don't use a dry or rather an absorbent substrate they're not smelly they're not a problem if you choose your substrate wisely lighting entirely up to you they don't care water bowl for these species something they can curl up in might never do ever but the contents of that water bowl keep it fresh they drink quite a bit they're active colubrid snakes they don't want to drink from dirty foul water don't let them get dehydrated because you're not giving them something as basic as clean water. Yes, they're messier than a python that turns out once every few weeks. But as long as you choose your substrate well and you spot clean as needed, there's no reason that black tail crebos are going to be a stinky snake in your collection. They'll eat anything. This guy loves salmon and trout strips. He loves any rodents and he loves day old cockerels. In fact, he's pretty much a dustbin snake that will eat anything that goes in there. Even when he's in bloom, he'll often still eat. He's gonna to grow to maybe seven or eight feet long. But as you can see, we're only just into 2023. 2021 snake. This is a sort of size these things grow to in that short space of time so they're not just different colors of a similar snake yellow tail crebos much flightier longer and thinner much flightier the indigo the eastern indigo and the black tail crebo very very handleable species he does huff and puff in fact most of mine will huff and puff when they're being handled his throat's a little bit pouched up a little bit of threat there 
hardly ever gets handled. Look at this, completely, completely non-aggressive. Highly recommend Blacktail Kribos if you want a big colubrid, because my goodness me, they are not only beautiful in their own way, they are beautiful pets. Now, they come in what we often call smooth line. I think Black Pearl in America call these a smooth line, smooth golden almost pattern here. And Dave at Rainforest also breeds the more speckly sort of granity line that have got much more speckling and markings here. I prefer the pure looks of the smooth line. Beautiful but smooth colouring here, blending lovely into this wonderful black tail contrast. I could waffle about this guy for hours and again it's such a shame it's not touch of vision. Solid heavy bodied colubrid, big big scales, smooth scales, feels amazing, absolutely amazing. In the UK still a rare commodity indeed very few people in the whole of the uk actually breeding any of the dry mark on any indigos or any creamers but they are being bred here they are being captive bred even the eastern indigo and they're going to become more and more available as time goes on they are expensive not overly so if you shop around and you know who the good guys are but they're not easy easy to breed snakes and they take a long time to mature and a sensible price tag is actually fantastic value for money when you consider the time and effort the breeder has had to put in on these snakes next time we meet this guy he's probably going to be bigger than he is now and i'd like to think one day He'll be touching eight foot like my yellowtail creamer male. So once I move these guys up into a 4B2B2, I'll still have it fairly cluttered to start with. Plenty of hiding places. They do like to feel quite secure, that is for sure. As the snake grows, I gradually declutter their enclosure they do love a deep substrate and they do love those dark hide boxes with a slightly damp coir mix within and if it's your thing of course large plastic tubs in a rack system still work for now i hope you've enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed meeting this guy Check out the other playlist. If you don't watch the vlogs, check out the vlogs. There's always some snakes on there too. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.